Hey guys, this is Craig Michelaccio with AEC Service Tech, and today what we're going over is how to perform a triple evacuation on a mini split unit. So this is a ductless mini split, and an evacuation means that we're pulling all of the air and water out of the system with this vacuum pump. And these service valves right here are front seated, which means we have refrigerant in this outdoor unit, and we're just installing our tubing right here and our indoor head unit. So we have to prepare these two lines and we gotta get all the air and the water vapor out of this system. We're able to monitor our vacuum level with this vacuum gauge. And I just wanna show you what the difference is between a triple evacuation and a single evacuation. I'm gonna start this uh, from the beginning where before I even pull this valve core out so you can see all the steps right here. But a triple evacuation includes nitrogen. The reason I wanted to do this video is a lot of installation manuals for ductless mini split units say to do a triple evacuation. And I just want to show you that you can confirm that you have no air, no nitrogen in the system. And the whole point is that we're preparing these lines to add the refrigerant into those lines. So you wanna make sure that you don't have any air in there that will mix with the refrigerant. You wanna make sure that you don't have any water in these, in these tubes, any water vapor, because that will mix with the, the oil and that will end up creating alcohol and acids. And you remember that Refrigerant and oil circulate through the whole system all the time uh, when the system's running and you have the electrical windings in the compressor. Uh, those are exposed to the refrigerant and the oil. It's actually to cool the windings down. But if you have acidic oil in your system, it's going to break the compressor electrical windings down and you could have a compressor burnout. So it's very important to prepare these lines. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to show you uh, from the very beginning how to set these tools up. So to get started, we've pulled this cap off, we've pulled these caps off, and we're just getting ready to prepare this tubing. It was already pressure tested and the nitrogen was released. So now these tubes are empty. There is refrigerant in this unit and it's being held back by the service valve. So let's just go ahead and pull this valve core out. And so you know, this is a 5 16 valve core removal tool and a quarter inch valve core removal tool. You can see that this one doesn't fit. So we're gonna end up using this one for our vacuum setup, but we don't need to attach it quite yet. We can just go ahead and pull the valve core out because there is no pressure in this uh, line set right here. So I like to just kind of keep this off to the side altogether. There's our valve core right there. And we're pulling that out to reduce the uh, restriction right here. We want a good flow for our vacuum. Now we're gonna install our 5 16 valve core removal tool. The other thing is these valve core removal tools typically have a valve core in the side right here, the side port. I always pull that out and I leave it out. I find no reason to have that extra valve core right there. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and mount this on. And we need to use valve core removal tools once we remove the, the valve core because uh, you're gonna need this tool in order to reinsert the valve core when you're all done. Now the reason I install a second one is just to valve off my vacuum gauge. So this is my vacuum gauge and I just like to valve that off before I break the vacuum with refrigerant uh, because I don't want to get any oil up in this uh, sensor that's in here because then it has to get cleaned. So I just valve it off ahead of time. I have no problems then. Now we just install our vacuum hose. So this hose connects right here to our vacuum pump. So this is a 3 8 port with a 3 8 hose and it reduces down to quarter inch. So just because this side's 5 16ths, this and this are still quarter inch. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a single evacuation first. I'm gonna show you how to do a standing vacuum test. So I'm just gonna go ahead and turn our vacuum gauge on. I'm gonna start our timer to see how long the vacuum takes. And you really want to get a vacuum down below 500 microns. And this, this uh, right here, the vacuum gauge, is going to show you the vacuum level. Also, you might have a little bit of air trapped in these valves right here. So I just close them and open them while the vacuum pump's running. And you see we're sucking down. You want to make sure that you get down below 500 microns and that you stay below 500 microns during the standing vacuum test. We may shoot to pull down to maybe 200 or 150 microns. And what's gonna happen is we're going to shut the, the vacuum pump off right here. But we're still gonna read our vacuum in the system this way. 
and we want to make sure that it doesn't rise too, too far. So with mini splits, a good target is say two to three hundred microns, or you know you can go down even further if you'd like. So we're going down fairly deep. We're going down to 170. It really doesn't take a real long time in order to pull vacuum when you remove the valve core. Also, you get a more accurate vacuum level reading because there's no restriction here. If we had that valve core in there, this, this vacuum would show a much deeper vacuum, and then when we go to shut that vacuum pump off, it would rise dramatically, because it's reading more of the vacuum closer to the vacuum pump than it is the system. But in this case, it's all open. So I'm just gonna close these one more time. And now I'll go ahead and turn this valve to the off position and then we'll shut our vacuum pump off. I'm going to stop this. You saw it took about two minutes for that vacuum. Now we're doing the decay test or the standing vacuum test where we're reading the vacuum in the system. So we shut off our vacuum pump right here. You notice that I don't have a manifold gauge set. I like to keep it as simple as possible with just the one vacuum hose and then my valve core removal tools and my vacuum gauge. So we've held a standing vacuum test for 10 minutes. You see it just actually shut off on me right there, but it was reading 340 microns. So we're pretty stable and we would be ready to add refrigerant into this system. Uh, just, you know, this shuts off over, over a, maybe a, a 10 minute, a 12 minute time period. And, uh, but anyway, so we would be ready to add refrigerant into this system. However, I'm going to go ahead and show you what a triple evacuation looks like. So I'm just going to raise the, the pressure back up to zero PSIG, again with my nitrogen first to start off, and then we'll go ahead and I'll show you a triple evacuation. So to break this vacuum with nitrogen, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure my thumb screw's backed up, and I'm going to open up my tank, and we see that our tank reads about 2200 PSI, and I'm just going to turn this valve to the off position, and I'm gonna turn this valve in. It's only gotta move the needle just a little bit, and that's it, so. It's not even worth attaching the, uh, the gauge set to it. Now we're gonna purge the air out of this hose. So we just have nitrogen in here now. And what I'll do is I'll just shut this. I'll take my vacuum gauge off. You could do it either way, either from here or here. I'm just doing it from the top. Purge my nitrogen again. And so all you need to do, this valve is closed, so I'm just going to go ahead and put a little pressure in. So we're going to be at maybe 5, 10 PSI, and we would just wait normally for, for five minutes. But that's all you really need to do. We're back up to positive pressure again. And then we can just go ahead and release that pressure. And now we're ready to add our vacuum gauge back on. And I'm ready to go ahead and show you what the triple evacuation looks like. It's, it's very simple. So we'll go ahead and start her off. You don't have to go all the way down to your deep vacuum before you break it with nitrogen. Technically, that could have been our, our first uh, breaking the vacuum with nitrogen, because so we have to do that twice, and then the third time we pull a vacuum down, that's when we break it with refrigerant from the system. But anyway, right here, we will go ahead. We will go ahead and now add our nitrogen. 
All we're doing really is we're adding positive pressure in, uh, but the other thing is we're adding room temperature or outdoor air temperature nitrogen to the system. And so what that's doing basically is it's increasing the temperature on these lines. It's letting any water vapor thaw. So remember that when we're using our vacuum pump, what we're, what we're really doing is we're boiling the, the water vapor out by uh, lowering the pressure. And the other thing is we're removing any heat that was in the uh, tubing here. We're removing that when we're removing that water vapor. So what we're doing by adding the nitrogen pressure is we're increasing the pressure and just adding our uh, our warm temperature nitrogen back in the system and it's it's melting any frozen water in the tubing unfortunately there's no port right here on a standard split system you could do what's called a, a nitrogen flow and it would let the nitrogen out of the other side and that would really help your your vacuum procedure but in this case all we can do is just go ahead and add our pressure in release it start again So that was our first one. This second time, we'll let the vacuum go down a little bit lower. You see that we must have had some nitrogen in these valves. It's just like right around the ball of the valve in here, that's where the nitrogen ends up getting stuck at, and that's why we close these valves and open them back up again. So you see we got pretty deep pretty quick. We're down at 140 microns, and what we'll do is we'll just turn these one more time. So when we add our nitrogen in, and it may uh, mix with any water vapor that, that maybe is, is frozen, it gets thawed out, and then what happens is it comes out with the nitrogen uh, when you release your nitrogen pressure. Typically, you're supposed to let this nitrogen sit in the, the tubing here for, say, five minutes, uh, but we're going to be doing it fairly quickly just to, just to show you uh, in this procedure here. I would much rather prefer a uh, nitrogen purge where we're able to push the nitrogen through from one side to the other. Remember that's dry nitrogen and uh, it's able to push any humidity that's in the air still or in the tubing, it's able to push it right out. Unfortunately, since we're dealing with a mini split, we only have one port. But we still have our mini split manufacturers a lot of times are recommending a triple evacuation. But the whole point is that we're just pulling a vacuum on the system and we're confirming it during our standing vacuum test. So if we can do that, then we know that our system's good. This time we'll go ahead and pull it down just a little bit deeper in vacuum and then we're just going to go ahead and do our standing vacuum test. So all you do is you break your vacuum twice with nitrogen. And you only need, say, 5 to 10 PSI that you're putting in there. And if you have another port, let it flow through. But in this case, we're just letting it sit in there. Uh, so if you are having a hard time pulling a vacuum uh, on a mini split system, number one, if this system was an existing system and uh, you're working on the tubing, if it once had oil in it, you may need to do uh, an oil blow through or oil blow out. Basically, what you would do is, you know, with these valves front seated, you would end up disconnecting this after, after you recover any refrigerant that's in this tubing. Basically what you do is you disconnect this, you hook it to your nitrogen bottle, and you put a cup underneath here. You want to 
just catch any droplets of oil that come out. But the whole point is that you blow nitrogen through the whole tubing so it blows the oil onto the inner walls of the tubing. And you're not really blowing it out, you're just blowing it onto the inner walls. And then after that you can go ahead and do your vacuum. Uh, so if you're having a problem doing a vacuum on a mini split system, maybe you didn't pressure test it long enough, you know, or maybe there's oil, like an oil glob moving around in here and that's messing up your vacuum. Uh, but otherwise, there could just be water vapor in and you may want to go ahead and do a triple evacuation. Uh, but we want to make sure that we turn those on and off. You see that even though we got down to 130, we still had a little bit of air around the, uh, the balls of the valve. But anyway, you could do a triple evacuation if it just doesn't seem to be working out for you, or you have a lot of uh, a lot of water that was in this tubing for some reason. Maybe this line set was ran, and the ends were just left open outside. You know, you, you want to do a nice deep vacuum, but the whole point is our standing vacuum test or decay test is going to be able to tell us if we have any problems in our system. So I'll just go ahead and turn these off one more time. We'll wait till it gets down to 120 here. And that's it. Now we'll wait our 10 minutes and we'll see how high this rises. And then we can break this vacuum with refrigerant from the surface valves. So it's been 10 minutes and now we can break the vacuum with refrigerant from the outdoor unit at the service valves or by adding refrigerant into the valve core removal tool right here. Now we're going to open the service valves. So you could use this with a ratcheting wrench or just your Allen key. That's it. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take this off. We're at positive pressure right now. So I'm going to put my valve core back in here. And you want to make sure to not take this off either. What I'll also do is I'll loosen this up just a little bit in order to put my valve core back in. Open this up. We're going to purge just a little bit of air that's in here. So what you do is you have to hold this inwards while you tighten it. Just a little awkward for me trying to do this on the camera, but usually uh, it's not that difficult. After that, I shut that off. What I like to do is I put a cap on here with a hole in it, and I put a little uh, anti-corrosive bubble leak detector to see if there's any bubbles. So there's my little hole. And what this is doing is, is just testing to make sure that my Schrader valve is not, uh, not allowing refrigerant through. So you don't want to just remove this off in case refrigerant is going to blow right through your valve core. So what we're going to do is we're going to put our leak detector right there on the end. And we'll see if it blows a bubble. If it does, then we're going to need to either snug up on that valve core or we're going to need to replace that valve core. If you have a long line set length, you could just break the vacuum by adding refrigerant into this port instead of opening the valves first because that'll suck that refrigerant right in and you can weigh in you know, the, the amount that you need per foot. 
So up on the rating plate, there will be a amount of refrigerant that's included in this system with a cumulative line set length that you're um, able to have the refrigerant in the system for. Anything past that, you're going to need to add extra refrigerant in, and that's why you do that right after your vacuum. But anyway, we are good. There's no bubbles here, so you just let that sit for like two minutes like that, and we're good to go. So we can go ahead and start our system up and check it out. And that's how you do it. You just make sure you put your caps back on as well. If you look for any of the tools used in this video, I'll have them linked down in the description section below. Also check out our website over at ecservicetech.com where we have different resources there such as our book and our quick reference cards and we also have a bunch of articles there. Like us over on Facebook at facebook.com slash ecservicetech and hope you enjoyed yourself. We'll see you next time at EEC Service Tech Channel.